So today we're going to go through how to triage a Java malware. Uh, we're not going to actually analyze the malware that it downloads, but we're going to triage the initial infection vector, and that's the Java file itself. But before we do, if you all want to follow along with this analysis, you can head over to ringzerolabs.com. There will be a link below this video. And you can download a sample of this malware along with viewing a, an analysis report for it. But for now, we're going to look at the Java file, and uh, I just named it java.jar. And in order to uh, look at this file, you can go ahead and look at the strings. Um, and <clears throat> you have a few legible things here. Um, but really, we can't glean a whole lot of information out of that. So what we're going to use is a tool called uh, Java Decompiler. It's uh, jdtacgui.exe. And you can find that on GitHub, and it's a free tool. But when we open this up, we can go ahead and find the file that we want to open. And then we come over here to the left-hand column and expand all of these classes. And notice there's a lot of classes here that uh, don't really resolve to anything. Um, I think maybe the author put all these blank classes in here just for, uh, well, basically to be annoying. But the, uh, the one that we're actually interested in is uh, almost towards the bottom, and it starts with a VIA, and that's actually going to give us the code of this file. So running down through, we can, I mean, this is basically just straight back to uh, source code, and we can follow the code down through. Um, a lot of the names don't make any sense, so it's a little obfuscated, not really. Um, it's more... Uh, security through obscurity at this point, but we can read through the code, come down, we can see that it's going to reach out, um, try and download a file, uh, we can even see the actual IP address here. Um, <clears throat> uh, just forewarning, uh, don't use any IP addresses or uh, credentials or anything to go ahead and reach out to these servers. Um, you could potentially become infected or they could get your um, information back to your IP address and maybe uh, you know do some harm to you that way so you want to be really careful uh, that's why I always run a VPN and stuff when I actually investigate these uh, types of malwares but going back to the analysis we can see that uh, you know it's going to rename a file to dot uh, dat here it's just doing simple string concatenation um, it's going to download something called kk.zip from this uh, IP address and it's going to eventually rename it to testy.zip. Uh, it's going to place it in the public administrator folder. And then down here at the bottom we see a bunch of renaming. Um, it looks like it's going to have some files that end in .png, but it's going to rename them to .exes. Um, there's another PNG here, which it will rename to a .drv. That's a driver. And then a PNG here, which it renames to a .db. And then down at the bottom, it's going to run the exe that it renamed. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, again, I don't recommend doing this, um, but we're going to go ahead and look at this IP address and the subdirectory to see if there's anything else there, which I've already done. And there is. Um, you can straight look at the directory um, on this IP address and see that there's many other zips. Here, in our case, it's downloading this kk.zip, and I've actually downloaded all these zips to see what's inside of them, and based on their sizes here and based on the contents of the ones that I downloaded, um, they, they pretty much all look the same. So it looks like it's just rename, um, so different versions of the malware would download different file names. Um, and if we look at the, the files, <coughs> This is what it ends up renaming them to. So you see here that there's the exe, there's the driver, there's the db. And all these files are fairly heavily recognized in VirusTotal. Um, this one isn't. I actually modified it a little bit, which is why it's not showing up. But the, the driver is recognized as a Zussi, some sort of banking trojan. Again, we're not going to analyze them. But this is what um, what the jar ends up downloading from that server. 
So Java Decompiler is a, is a fantastic tool. Um, again, you get basically back to the source code of the, uh, of the jar and you can straight read through it. Now, not all Java malware is going to be this straightforward. Some of it's going to be really obfuscated, um, just like a lot of uh, .NET files and things. You know, you can basically get back to the intermediary code, but they can insert a lot of routines that do a lot of string obfuscation and things to make it really hard to read through. But there are Java uh, debuggers and things out there so you can run through the code and, and get the strings and everything that you need and get back to basically how this one looks so that you can find the callouts and the files that it's doing. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, again, this is a super quick video. Just, you know, if you have a jar and you think it's malicious, JD GUI is a, is a fantastic tool to get back to this code and kind of read through it and see what's going on. So if y'all have any questions about this video or any of other of our videos, go ahead and hit us up at ringzerolabs.com and we'd be happy to answer any questions.